Okay, we're back and it's time to add some action to this quest that we've been working on in the tutorial. So, so far you should have an environment set up and you should have a conversation set up from our past two tutorials. And we're gonna pick up from there and add some events to that conversation so we can make things a little more interesting. Make sure you have your Visual Studio Code open and I'm gonna show you a little trick. I don't remember if I showed you last time or not. I have the Quest Dev folder that we've been working on and um, I'm gonna take the Benton Quest folder inside our server and I'm gonna drag it over into Visual Studio Code and drop it. And when we do that, I'm gonna close this welcome window. Now you can easily click on the files from here to open them up. So I just find that this makes it a little easier to click and get around and get back and forth between each of the files, especially since we're gonna be adding some more this time. Okay, and since we're talking about um, adding new files inside the tutorial quest folder, um, not in the conversations folder, out here with the package, let's go ahead and just um, copy package and then make an extra one just like it and let's rename it events instead. Just great. So we have our package, our events, our conversation folder with Jack inside, inside the tutorial quest and we can see all that over here as well. So let's go ahead and open up the documentation and go to the tutorial. Um, let's open this up a little bigger, find the tutorial section. We're in the basics right now. We've, we've finished conversations and we're now moving on to events. Okay, you can see at the top here, the requirement is the conversation tutorial, which we have done. So we're gonna scroll on down in our new events folder. We need to set it up to look like this. So let's go ahead and copy that. And um, I'm gonna minimize this so we can work in both files at one time. Find your events YAML that we just created. And since we duplicated it from package, it's going to have this in there. We wanna delete that. Um, and now we're going to simply paste in the new information that they gave us right in here. Okay, so just a quick explanation about what's going on here, what we pasted in here. The first uh, thing is our section header, which we've talked a little bit about in some of our other uh, things like conversations. We had a header here called conversations. So same thing, events for this section. Um, this is any name that you want to give it. For the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna keep it Give Food to Player. That's the name of this event. Um, and then this is very particular about what it needs to say. This first argument is always going to be the type of event that you're declaring. And then everything that comes after it is going to be options. And every event has a set of options that you can declare. Some of them are optional to put in and some of them are required. In this particular case, it's required that we give it an item and a quantity. So just real quick, I'm gonna take a bunny trail. You do not need to go with me over there. I just wanna show you something really quick. We did skip over at the top. If, um, if we scrolled all the way up, in here there was related documents and one of them is called the event list. Inside the event list, you're gonna see that there are many, many different events that you can declare. And here's the give one that we're using today. If you click on it, it'll take you down in the documentation to the give one and it'll tell you some examples of what some of those elements do for you and how you might use them. Now you notice in the documentation, they didn't put the key here ahead of time. The only thing you're seeing is this part. So don't get confused by that. In the documentation, it will always be that way. They will leave the key off usually in the examples and just give you the declared part that you have to put in after your key, okay? So just wanted to show you that and we're just gonna go back to our tutorial real quick. So the next important thing to point out here would be that um, Benton Quest is not, does not directly interface with the um, Minecraft item names. It requires you to actually declare those in their own section um, because obviously steak is actually cooked beef in Minecraft. So in our package, we're gonna create another section. We had created NPCs in our first tutorial. Now we're going to create a section called items. So I don't wanna copy all of this over. So I'm just gonna copy this part right here that says steak. And we already wrote in items. So I'm gonna copy this over and put it in here. So now we've set 
the name steak is the key value and we've hooked it up to Minecraft's cooked beef item. So in our package, let's go ahead and save the item and in our events, let's go ahead and save that. Uh, the next thing we need to do is make it so that we can take this event and run it in our conversation. So now uh, we're gonna go over to our conversation file. If you don't have it open already, go under conversations and click on Jack Yaml and it will be up here as one of our tab options. So here's our conversation that we set up last time and we want to add the stake in to our conversation. So if we scroll down here a little bit, it shows us that we want to add that in to food answer. Again, I am just going to copy these new sections and paste them in over here. Find food answer right here. So the matching section is food answer here. Now it's gonna be important as you're copying and pasting in segments to code that you already have, that you're very careful to line everything up exactly where it needs to go. So as you can see, when I copied this in, it did something really weird. So let's just clean this up a little bit and double check that it looks right. We have events, give food to player, pointer, thank you. Okay, so that means that after this conversation now, it's going to go down to the pointer, thank you. So let's go ahead and copy that as well. Just that part. We need to add that under the player options section. So here's our player options. And I'm just gonna add it down here to the bottom and paste that in there. And so we can see this is lined up with this one and this text is lined up with these texts. So now our pointer, thank you, is attached to this option here that the player can make. So we have finished our first event and we're already ready to go test this first event out. So let's let's go. Let, I'm going to minimize the tutorial and let's get our uh, game open. All right, I just realized what's going on. If if you get this problem where you're trying to connect to your server and it's just sitting here not connecting or maybe it'll time out, sometimes um, uh, if you have a, uh, a router that changes the IP address periodically, which mine has done at this point because it's been a while since I've opened the server, then you will need to go into your server and edit it and change your IP address to be whatever your new router address is. All right, so I got my new IP address put in and this should run now. Okay, so here we are. And if you had your server open already, then you may need to do a reload. So let's just in case, go ahead and do one. It won't hurt anything. Remember the command is BQ reload. Uh, so now we should be able to talk to Jack and run our event. And here we go. Pick either one of these options you want and let's go through. Okay, and now if you recall, the last time we added in a comment that talked about, um, the mayor said something about being hungry. Now we've added the food, so now we should get something. And great, it looks like it gave us 16 steaks. And now the conversation ends there. Great, so the next step is the tutorial is going to show us other ways to be able to test some of the pieces of our quest without having to run all the way through the conversation every single time and you may just want to taste, test the parts that you have modified. So in this particular case, we if we go to section five, um, you'll see right here that there is an event listed that we can run. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this line over here into the game. And the first part is the command extension, the plugin. And the second part in this particular case is gonna be event, but there are other um, options you could choose from Benton Quest to test and run that you'll learn about later. Um, so we're doing an event and then the next part is our name or the player's name that we're going to run it for. And then this next piece is the package and Benton Quest already recognizes that our only package is Tutorial Quest. Um, and so this is, if you don't remember, the name of the package is the folder that the quest resides in. So we're going to go ahead and auto-complete that. And then the next part is going to be 
the event in this case, the name of the event that we're running. And if you can't remember what it is, you can go find it over here and copy and paste it in. But in this case, but we only have one and it's already auto completing it. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in and then hit enter and run that and we should get uh, 16 more stakes and we indeed did. The other alternative is we could have typed that in down in the console. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up and just copy it because it's an awful lot to type in. Remember, we don't want the slash. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and bring it down here and paste it into the console. Um, so that's another option if you weren't in the game and you just wanted to test it directly here, you could test it here too and you'll get the feedback that it ran. Now, if it had not run and it had made an error, for instance, earlier I was playing with something and you can see that there's a warning that says it couldn't find something, you would get an error message, hopefully giving you a clue of what maybe went wrong with what you had put in. So that completes an alternative way that you could test parts of your quest without having to run through the entire dialogue to test what you want to test. Okay, let's move back over to the button quest tutorial and go on to step six, where we're going to create another event, actually two new events. And um, the first event is going to be a teleport event. As part of the teleport event, we are going to also create a special kind of event called a folder event. So to do that, let's first go ahead and copy all of this. And since it's going to be overwriting this, we're gonna go ahead and just clear our event YAML out and get rid of that and then paste that whole thing in. I'm gonna put a space in to separate this and I'm just gonna move this over a little. So this folder event, remember the first word tells what type of event it is. So this one is a teleport event. This one was a give event and this is a folder event. And what a folder event is going to do for us is it's going to take any events that we put in our list. And remember with the list, we don't want spaces between the commas. So what we're doing is we're making a list of several different events that we want to have fire all at one time. Um, and actually in this particular case, they won't fire all at one time because there's some special arguments at the end that are optional. For instance, this first one is a delay. So it's going to wait two seconds before it starts running the first event, which is a teleport event. Um, and this is done to kind of make it so that they aren't immediately just ripped out of the conversation and teleported. The, tele the conversation has time to close itself out and then, um, and then it will start running its events. So that's when you would use a delay event. This second argument, which is also optional, instead of firing all of these events at one time, it basically makes each of these events wait for the, before they run the next event. And in this particular case, five seconds. So we should expect to see the player get teleported to the first location. It would wait a few seconds and then um, teleport to the next location and so on. At the end, the folder will stop running when it reaches the last event, which is the blacksmith. And we'll be doing something later in the tutorial uh, for the blacksmith. Right, so now that I've explained what all of this is supposed to be doing, let's go ahead and save that. And uh, we need to insert it into our conversation. Another nice thing about a folder is now we can take a whole string of events and just have to type in this one key into our conversation, which is what we need to do next. So uh, let's go back to our conversation. And I'm gonna reduce this just a little bit so we can see here. Let's scroll down to the next step. Here we go, right here. So here are the two sections that we're going to be inserting into our conversation. And uh, what we're adding, it looks like, is a new NPC dialogue that is going to give the player an option, two different options you can see in the pointer here. And those go down to here are the two options that have been added. Let's go ahead and copy those. I would not use this copy symbol because it has cut off some of the conversation here. So let's go ahead and try to carefully scroll over and copy just the parts that we want to add. And this should be added to the bottom of the NPC options where I put the space in. I'm gonna add a couple more spaces here and try to line up on the far edge so that we get the alignment correct here and scroll back over here. So town tour is lined up 
and the text and the pointer is lined up so that's good but we've got some problems here this will actually run it, it won't hurt anything to have extra lines in there but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring those up now let's add the player options which are down here select just the new ones and again we're gonna add them in just below thank you um, and get rid of these spaces just double check that all of these are lined up exactly right that there's not like we wouldn't want accidentally one extra space it's very easy to do okay so now we have that added into our conversation let's go ahead and save you can see it's not saved up here all right and so that's the end of this tutorial there's no more here other than to go test this but there's one more thing that I think we should do let's go back to events and this event is going to end here at whatever this location is and I don't know where we currently are in our world but when we get back we're not going to be able to find where NPCs are if we don't know our location so let's go into our world let's do a function f3 if you don't know already that will bring up this panel let's figure out where we're at so we're currently in this vicinity so you might just want to make some changes so that you end up close to where we're working at so we don't have to deal with that later go ahead and save that and come back here and let's load all this okay now and let's turn off the coordinate stuff remember that's a function f3 great let's see what that does uh -huh. okay so let's get through the conversation it doesn't matter which one we choose in this particular case because we want to test the teleport let's pick the top option okay and there we go he says he's going to give us a tour see we, so this is why we want to be in creative because now we're in a tree <laughs> and we were in the ocean and who knows where we're at now falling likely ah okay and then we ended up close to Jack here. This is why we changed the location so we would be relatively close at the end. If you want to read more about events, just a brief overview and get a little more information on them, uh, let's head back to the documentation real quick. Uh, back up at the top of the tutorial that we were working on today, there was a link that took us to the events list, which I showed you. So if you want to, you can look through some of these and read a little bit about what they can do. As you get more familiar with Benton Quest, uh, it'll make a little more sense how you can use some of those to come up with some creative solutions to problems that you're having with your quest. So the only other link here that we didn't visit was then this events reference. So let's go there real quick. And here is just a short little overview of what um, events are in Button Quest, but really what this whole document is, if you scroll to the top, is just basically Button Quest in in a nutshell, like an overview of what Button Quest is. Up here, there's a comparison of other plugins and how they operate, and some of the flexibility that Button Quest offers. Um, so this is an interesting section to read about Button Quest, but the rest of this is just an overview of some of the key features that are interesting about Button Quest and how they can be used um, to help you solve quest problems and stuff. So I look forward to seeing you next time, hopefully. Uh, I'll be covering the next section in the tutorial, which is objectives. And then we'll have one final startup tutorial on conditions. And then this startup tutorial section will be finished. And then I don't know where we'll go from there. Uh, hopefully I'll do some other videos on some of the features for Benton Quest, but I'm not sure yet what that will look like. Um, see you next time.